this morning. I want to speak to you on a subject that's uh, going to sound a little different. My subject this morning is Athanasius Contra Mundum. You're looking at me like I'm speaking in tongues, but I'm not. That's Latin. <laughs> it means Athanasius against the world. Now, Athanasius was born about 300 A.D. And about 325 A.D., when he was about 25 years old, we don't know that exactly, but we know for sure he was under 30 because his enemies kept pointing that out. A controversy started in the church in Alexandria in Egypt. And a, bit, a man named Arius started teaching that Jesus was created, that the Holy Spirit created Jesus, that he didn't exist before he was created in, in the womb of Mary, and uh, that he became the full-fledged Son of God when the Spirit came on him when John the Baptist baptized him. And of course, anyone that knows the New Testament knows that's, that's not what it says. That's not true. Jesus talked about the glory that was his before the world began. But this teaching, because he was so articulate and he could write poetry and he would put his doctrine in poems, and people, they were fun little poems to say, say and sing, and, and it just spread everywhere. It began to spread, as, as one writer said, like wildfire. Well, a council was called by all the bishops to meet in a little town called Nicaea to settle the question. And the bishop of Alexandria believed that Athanasius, Athanasius was right. And so he invited him to come to this uh, council. As Athanasius approached the city where the council was meeting, he was confronted by some of the followers of Arius. And they told him that most of the bishops are against you. Even Constantine the emperor is against you. They said, Athanasius, the whole world stands against you. Well, he famously replied, then I stand against the world. And of course, those of you who know church history know that the Council of Nicaea came back to the orthodox position of who Jesus really is. And, uh, but his followers never forgave him for that. There were attempts on his life. In fact, the rest of his life, he became known as Athanasius contra mundum, Athanasius against the world. But he was constantly being harassed. He was banished out one time out to the desert south of Alexandria in Egypt, the desert. Out there, he met the desert fathers who were monks and monasteries out in the desert that worshiped God, and he helped them have correct doctrine, and they helped him know how to know God. And uh, then another time, he was banished to Cappadocia. You know, in the book of Acts, Apostle Paul went through Cappadocia, which was in the north part of what we call Turkey now. And there he met people, and they became great Basile the Great, he's called the Great because he did so much for Christ and for Christianity. See, like everywhere he went, great things happened. But his life, he was constantly harassed. But he never stopped standing against the world. If the world stands against me, he said, then I stand against the world. Well, in Matthew 24, 14, we are given a scripture and we're told that every generation of Christians are responsible that everyone living in their time hears the gospel and knows how to become a disciple of Jesus. That's Matthew 24, 14. 
and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, then the end will come. And of course, this is Jesus speaking. The word world that's used in that verse is a word that the Greeks had that meant the inhabited earth, wherever there's people. Now, another word they had was cosmos. In John 3.16, he says, God so loved the cosmos that he gave his only begotten son, which means everything that exists. But the word used here that Jesus used, or that Matthew records Jesus, is the word that means the inhabited earth. That everyone... knows how to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And it says it's the gospel of the kingdom. Now my understanding of the gospel of the kingdom is based on scriptures like Matthew 4, 23, 24, where it says, And Jesus went about teaching in all the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. He healed the sick, he cast out the demons. He delivered people from every oppression that was attacking them from the enemy. Or in Matthew 12, 28, when the Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out demons by Beelzebub, the chief of demons, he said, If I by the Spirit of God do cast out demons, the kingdom of God has come down on you. So to me, the gospel of the kingdom means God overthrowing every evil of darkness that oppresses humanity, healing the physical, emotional, and mental suffering. It means delivering people from every satanic, demonic oppression. It also means that when Jesus comes back, <coughs> then he's coming back, that when he comes back, he will throw overthrow every evil government and every evil system there is that causes people to suffer. In other words, as Amy McPherson said it, the four-square gospel, Jesus Christ, the only Savior, Jesus Christ, the great physician, Jesus Christ who empowers people with the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the coming King. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every nation he says, every nation will receive a witness. Every nation is the word ethnos from which we get the idea of ethnic groups. Or as Mark put it in his gospel, preach the gospel to every creature. In other words, no one left out. Now, the first of the year, Four Square Nations put out a uh, a notice that there are now, beginning this year, still 7,800 people groups who have not received the gospel. We got our work cut out for us. That's why I love the, the Four Square Missions. They always target people who haven't been reached if they can. It's, it's a way of being part of taking the gospel to every creature, our generation. Uh, but even wh whoever you, we need to be terribly responsible for missions and terribly responsible about our own personal witness. When the time is right, stand up for Christ. Well, who's going to stop us from doing that? It's a good question, right? Pastor John, I'm about to have a Marco Rubio moment. Could you find me some water? <laughs> I would so appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Who will stop us from fighting for just laws like stopping abortions and those type things, evil things that are happening? Well, who would stop us? Who has always stopped the church? It's governments including our own. We are at a time when not only our own government is against us, 
the powerful mainstream media is against us, the tech giants that control the information flow are against us, the entertainment industry is against us. You know, you know why sports people and uh, movie stars are always taking stands against us? It's because they're so condemned in their own mind that they're so famous for doing nothing that they have to take stands. And so they're standing for what's right. But what's right half the time is wrong. And see, that's how the Antichrist is going to come in. This is important information. The Antichrist will be somebody who convinces the world he's more of a Christian than Jesus. Think on that for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, there's the large corporations, like Eisenhower called the military industrial complex. He told us to watch out for them. And other great corporations. And you say, really? Now they're going to try to stop the gospel? Well, let me tell you a story. There was a, a famous Foursquare missionary in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. His name was Claude Updike. And he ministered in Nicaragua and other, other uh, Central American countries. And he would go to little towns, hold a meeting in the town square, and sometimes when he was done, everybody in town was a Christian. Yeah. That kind of stuff really happened. Yeah. In fact, one time he was getting ready to start his meeting and the, and the sheriff showed up with all his soldiers and their automatic weapons. They walked up and pointed their guns at him and said, Mr. Updike, when you finish your show, we're taking you to jail. And I remember him saying, I was so glad I didn't have a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While he was speaking, a man laid that someone had brought to the front row on a cot, yeah. a paralyzed beggar that everybody in town knew who he was, yeah. got up and started walking around. The sheriff walked up and said, have a good day, Mr. Updike, and got all the soldiers, and they left. So, but that brought up interesting question. I had occasion one time to say, actually sit down and talk to him, which I considered a tremendous privilege. Yeah. And I said, well, was anyone ever able to stop your meetings? Because he would, when he would go up on the little platform that they would build, there would be bat wings with pins and ribbons all over the stage of curses that had cursed him and said, you're going to die. <laughs> In his back pocket, he always had a letter from the local communist guerrilla saying, if you show up, we're going to kill you. But he says, none of them ever stopped me. He says, the only groups that were able to convince the government to stop me in, in, spite, in spite of the popular other people. See, the people love those meetings because the word would spread around the country. You get healed there when he comes to town. Yeah. He says, the only groups powerful enough to pressure the government to stop me were American and European corporations, international corporations that were doing business there and they could pressure the government to shut us down. I, I, I have a brother that for years worked in, at, in international uh, oil corporations. Yeah. And when I told him that, he says, well, why did the corporation cut him, want him to shut down? I said, I can only guess. I don't know. But they did. They wanted the gospel stopped. If you think they won't do that to us if they thought they could get away with it, yeah. you're not thinking very clearly about what's going on in our world. I've been watching this for a long, long time. But if the world is standing against us, now I'm not saying they're ready to shut down the gospel, but they're shutting down churches. They're trying to stop the gospel going forth. Mario Morello holding tent meetings in California, they've tried to shut him down because of COVID and they can't do it. They haven't been able to do it, but that doesn't mean they're not trying. <coughs> and 
If the world is standing against us, then we, like Athanasius, must stand against the world. But we must follow the words of our Lord Jesus who taught us to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves. Even more important than the spirit, the human powers are the spirit powers or powers of darkness. Ephesians 3, 6 to 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, what does that say? To stand. Hallelujah. We must be people, as I understand, the gospel of the kingdom, to overthrow every evil oppression that plagues humanity. Until Jesus comes back, we can't change human nature. We can't change all governments to good, but he can and he will. But let, through prayer, worship, and proclaiming the word is how we fight these spiritual enemies. So let me give a short list of issues to stand against the darkness and the powers of this world. I say short because of time. But Pastor John and I have been talking about maybe after the book of Hebrews, doing a study on spiritual warfare since it's been a while since we've done that. Do a renewing a study, understanding how to make war on the darkness, how to make spiritual warfare against the enemy. But one more scripture, this is my last one, Revelation 12, 11. <coughs> and they overcame him, the him is the devil, the dragon, Satan. You can read that in. Revelation 12, it names who he, exactly who he is, the him they're talking about. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. The only hope you and I have of defeating evil powers in this world is because the blood of Jesus was shed for us and that we can participate in the resurrection power of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And we know who the Lamb is because John the Baptist told us, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Excuse me just a minute. I know now why Marco Rubio reached for that water when he was on national television. <laughs> The blood of Jesus Christ, the blood justifies us in God's presence, Romans 5, 9. Therefore, being justified by his blood, we are saved from wrath. Sanctifies us to be God's people, the people of God. Hebrews 13, 12 says, Jesus was taken outside the camp and sanctified us with his own blood. The blood of Jesus is what sets us apart. Yeah, we're sinners. Yeah, we're flawed. Yeah, we're carnal sometimes. Yeah, we're, you know, those kind of people. But because of the blood of Jesus, God has set us apart to be his people. Hallelujah. The blood draws us near to God. Ephesians 2.13 says the blood of Jesus, we were far away, but now has brought brought us near to God. We can go, as John's teaching from Hebrews, right into the very throne room of God because of the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> he 
brings us power to defeat the enemies of God's kingdom. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They had to do something. And they would do it even if they died. Hallelujah. The first stand we must take must be in our own mind. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Learn how to not think like the world. When it says, be not conformed, that word, <clears throat> the Jesus people used to point this out so much. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold so that you look, act, and think like them. but be transformed by renewing your mind. Ephesians 4.23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Reject the enemy's accusations and condemnations. You see, your mind is protected by hope. In 1 Thessalonians 5.8, Paul says, put on the helmet of the hope of salvation. See, when you discovered that you, oh, I've been carnal all day, acting terrible, but, and the enemy says, you're not a real one. You can say, yes, I am, because the hope of salvation is in me by Jesus. Amen. Protect your mind. Yes. Learn to think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, and believe what Jesus said is true Amen. about how his blood is for the remission of sins. How his body brings us into the very presence of God. Reject the world's sin, both in your mind and as God gives you strength in practice. In Galatians 1.4, there's an interesting scripture. It says, Jesus died for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. The way the world gets you is to get you into sin. Now there's sins that everyone knows is bad and that's, oh, that's terrible, that's bad, and the enemy has to really get you to do those. But as Martin Luther said, it's the sins in fashion that'll take you down. Things the world says, well, that's okay. Reject sin in your mind and reject it in practice as much as God gives you strength. Jesus died to give you the power to be free. If you're not free, keep pressing for it because he has an answer for you. Seek God's kingdom in your own life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17 says... The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the power of the Holy Spirit. He will give you that righteousness, peace, and joy if you seek him with all your heart. God, I want your kingdom in me. He loves to answer those kinds of prayers. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Well, if you're doing these things, now you're ready to make war in the spirit against every demonic spirit moving in the government, media, business, or schools through prayer and intercession and worship that God will make them ineffective. He can and he will if his church really makes war that way. You see, the things going on are run by principalities and powers. The word powers means world forces. If there's a force moving in the world and a bunch of people are getting away with something and they shouldn't be getting away with that, it's because there's a spiritual power behind it, pushing it. Now, they're doing it because they're sinners and need to get saved. 
Because if they don't get saved, they're going to answer to God, and that's not good. I don't want to answer to God and not be saved. It's scary enough being saved and know I'm going to answer to God. But I definitely want to be saved. Covered by the blood of Jesus. Living my life in Christ. But along with the spiritual warfare, we must learn to be people who can stand for truth. An example in our day of a, a Christian who's refused to shut up and is standing even though the rest of us have all kind of retired of the media calling us liars, low life, blah, 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 people. But you know Mike Lindell has never shut up. He's still talking to him. And they're still listening to him even though they try to contradict him. Rand Paul, the senator from Kentucky, is still talking. And they try to shut him up, and they can't. But they, why do they keep having it on? Because the Spirit drives it. Because he wants us to stand for truth. You know, I recently heard a, a story of Christians in, who survived communism in Russia and Eastern Europe. And there's still people alive who were alive when it, when it started and lived through it, as well as people who were you know, born there and lived through it. And they all said the secret that, of being a Christian when the government and every power is totally against you is to know they're liars and that Jesus told you the truth. If you know they're lying, you can let it pass through. It's when you start believing their propaganda that the enemy can start pulling you away from the true truth. And they said that all during the time that the communists were in control, there would be people who would finally stand up against one of their lies and they'd go to jail. But it helped everybody else know, hey, there's other people besides us that don't believe that nonsense. Yeah. And it would encourage us, even though we didn't all stand at the same time and go to jail. But then we would pray for them and help their families and do whatever we could. But we've got to understand that's a mindset we've got to get ready for. Now, I'm not saying we're going all the way there. I'm saying, but we need to understand that's the cliff we're about to fall off of if things don't turn around. And we've got to be ready to stand and to stand for the people that stand so that they, the enemy can't shut them down and, and they do without. He might shut them down, but we can stand them back up. You understand what I'm saying? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and not loving their own lives unto the death. Hallelujah. Well, there's so much more we could say about that. But I know you're all wanting to go home and eat so you can watch the football game. Some of you know, like me probably don't care about the football game, but you're, you're keeping quiet like I am. Yes. <laughs> or I was. <laughs> but we, we want to take communion. I'm serious now. Yes. We want to take communion and remind ourselves of what Jesus has done for us. Jesus said, as often as you do this in remembrance of me, we don't forget what Jesus has done. Has any government agency ever done more for you than Jesus? No. In fact, usually they don't help. Most of the while they do stuff that's supposed to be helped, but it's nothing compared to what Jesus has done for us. I'll take Jesus over the government anytime. 
and the government can't forgive my sins. Only Jesus can do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, there's a little chorus. Let's just sing it now. I need the Holy Spirit's help to transition into communion. Come Holy Spirit, move on me. Can we sing that? <laughs>